Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Drake Garibay, the Senior Systems Engineer for ReasonableITService.com, and sitting behind me, I have a small stack of USW48POE Unify switches doing one gigabit, and we are using these to upgrade a client's existing Cisco switch stack, which is old and only doing 100 megabits per second, and they also do not support PoE. So one of the first things we like to do when getting a new switches is upgrade them to the latest and greatest firmware. And today I thought I would show you how simple it is to connect directly to your Unify switch and upgrade the firmware over SSH without having to join it and unjoin it from a Unify controller. We can always do that later. First things first, get your switch powered up and plug it into the local network. Then tap the I on the little LCD screen to reveal the IP address that we're going to be using to SSH to the switch. All right, so now that you've powered on your switch, you've plugged it into the network and you verified that it's obtained a valid IP address, we are ready to proceed and get that firmware upgraded. So what you want to do is get the model of your switch. I'm a USW48POE. You're going to copy that and then simply head over to the UI.com download software. Do a search for your model number and you want to grab the latest firmware, which in my case, it's 6.5.59. Go ahead and download it and we will have the firmware.bin file ready to go. Let's go ahead and now SSH straight away to our switch. In Windows 10, you can SSH natively from the command line. The default username of your switch should be UBNT and the IP address of the switch. The default password is going to be UBNT. Same thing. Now, if we type help, we can see what the upgrade firmware command is going to be. So this right here tells me that it's looking for the firmware file on a local web server. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it just that by turning our Windows 10 box into a local web server, which is very easy to do. You just have to flip on a couple Windows features and tweak a setting. You should be good. Also, if we go to info, we can see the current firmware version that our switch is running. In order to turn our windows into a web server, go ahead and do run appwiz.cpl, turn windows features on or off. Scroll down, you're looking for internet information services, check that off. Internet information services hostable web core, check that off, click OK. Windows will install those features, let's go ahead and test it. You're going to want to navigate to your windows IP address forward slash. Actually, if you go straight there, you should get the default web page. Okay, great. That lets you know the web server is up and running. Now to take this a step further and make sure that firmware file is actually accessible, you would do forward slash the name of the firmware file, blah, 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 dot bin. Now before it is on the web server, we need to put it there. So wherever you downloaded your firmware file, um, I already moved mine, but you're just going to copy it from your downloads. When you install the web services on Windows, it creates this INET pub folder. You navigate there. We're going to throw it into the root directory. Dub, 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 root. Open that up. There's my firmware file. So we can left click on that one time, do a copy, and let's go back to the browser. We're going to do a forward slash and then dot bin. If this file is actually accessible like it's supposed to be, it should download the file through the browser. But as you can see, we're going to run into this error. The request contained a double space sequence and request filtering is configured on the web server to deny double escape sequences. So we need to modify that setting. Do a search for IIS. Go ahead and open up the IIS manager. Go over to request filtering. Edit feature settings. Allow double escaping. OK. So we're going to copy this URL again over to a new tab. And if all goes well, it should download the file. Success. Bada bing, bada ching. All right, so now we know that the web server is functioning 100% now. So that means we should be able to get that 
firmware file from the switch. So let's go ahead and run an upgrade command. Remember, you're putting the IP address of your local web server, which is going to be your Windows machine that you've turned into a local web server. Let's go back to the C drive, inet pub, the root directory, left click once, copy, paste. Let's end that with a dot bin, enter. Okay, no news here is good news actually. It means it's doing something. Aha, here we go. Scheduling firmware upgrade, waiting for upgrade to start. By the way, this is how it looks like on the switch while the firmware update is running. Firmware upgrade has completed. The switch is back up. Let's go ahead and SSH back to it. UBNT, the default password. Let's go to info and we can see the new firmware version right here. And let's see what the old firmware version was. 6.3.11.14.082. The new version is 6.5.59.14.777. Aha, so it is a newer version. We're looking good, guys. And hey, we have successfully updated our Unify Switch firmware without messing with any controllers. Fantastic. And so there you have it. If this video has helped you out, please like and subscribe. We're really trying to grow this channel, guys. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to hire us for a project, head over to our website at reasonableitservice.com where you can book us for a free consultation. If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, please visit our Buy Me A Coffee where you can leave us a tip or visit our eBay store. We got a lot of cool electronics on there right now, guys. Some good deals, good sales going on. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments or contact us at our website. We'll be glad to help you out. Until next time, I will see you in the next video.